thought we would start by looking at what is perhaps the most famous painting in the world and whether we can actually even really still see it. Right, because I have seen this before. And I've, I've even visited it at the, the Louvre. I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> uh, yes, you're right. This is probably the most famous painting in the world. And I just read that most people spend about 15 seconds in the Louvre looking at the painting, which is a funny statistic. Well, it's stressful because there's people behind you. And on top of that, it's actually surprisingly small when you see it in real life. I mean, now that I'm able to take my time and not worry about the, the tourists behind me uh, and I'm, I'm looking at it for real, I'm already, things are jumping out at me that I, I actually had never noticed before. Like what? Well, it looks like the scenery in this some kind of like Vulcan territory or something. It's like, geez, there's this, it's like mountainous and well, I guess then there's a little bridge in there. There's a road. I, I guess I never paid much attention to that before. And yeah, actually, I've never even noticed this chair she was on before either. When you see her hand resting on it. Actually, and, and I never noticed that there's a ledge right behind her where there's like jars. But yeah, that guy could probably keep going. But yeah. I like your analogy to Vulcan territory as a Star Trek fan myself. That landscape is otherworldly and very mysterious. But it's interesting, isn't it, how the bottom part of the landscape at her neck and below looks like an inhabited landscape with a winding road and a bridge. But the landscape that's at her neck and head is more mysterious and looks very much like another planet. That, that's right, and it actually, when you when you point that out and how that painting is divided based on where those landscapes and the ledge divide the painting, I, I don't have my ruler out, but I would guess that it's pretty close to the golden mean. I think you're probably right. Those things that look like jars are actually the bottom of columns cut off on either side of the painting. So, so Leonardo da Vinci actually painted the columns and it was cropped. That's right. And so the space that she's in would have made a lot more sense as a balcony. And, and well, you know, all of this actually, just take a step back. I mean, we started with this presumption that it's a, and it's a true, uh, that, that is probably the most famous painting in the world. But I, I guess I've never quite gotten why. I mean, is this just a case of, of marketing? I think it happened in 1911 when the painting was stolen from the Louvre and disappeared for a couple of years and became notorious at that point. In the 19th century, the Mona Lisa was not the most popular painting at the Louvre. Paintings by other artists like Titian and Raphael were much more popular and even valued more highly for insurance purposes. So it really probably is only in the 20th century that she became as important as she is now. If you go back 150 years ago, uh, Mona Lisa was not something that was just ingrained in our culture. She was important. People were interested in her and people were writing about her and they said some interesting things. But she wasn't as famous as she is now. And also don't forget that the technology to reproduce her existed only really in the 20th century in terms of mass color reproductions. And so... Her currency has certainly increased, I think, in the last 100 years or so. I see. If you go back 150 years, there was probably no such thing as, as super famous paintings. I think that might be true, actually. There were paintings that were famous or important, but not celebrities in the right, way that the right. Mona Lisa is. That every person on the street would recognize. Yeah. And of course, now I think most people would say that what's so interesting about her is 